kindergarten mathematicians. This is Mrs. Brown and it's time for us to work together again. Today we will be working on lesson one for the week of June 8th through June 12th. Our objective for today says that we will make sense of problems by using the three read strategy to solve problems involving data from a survey. The three read strategy involves five steps to help you make sense of and solve problems. Step one, read to make sense. Step two, read for details. Step three, read to represent. Step four, solve the problem. Step five, check your work. This organizer can also be used to help you keep track of your thinking as you work through these five steps to solve problems. During our lesson today, we are going to use the three read strategy to help us solve a problem involving data from a survey. Step one in the three reads process is read to make sense. This first time that we are reading a problem, our goal is to find out what the story is about. We need to be visualizing what is happening in the story, making a movie in our minds. We should be asking ourselves, what is the action taking place in the story? We should also think about how we can describe or retell this story in our own words. Finally, we should be thinking about things that we wonder. Maybe there are some questions that we have about the story. Let's practice this first step of the three reads process with a story about a girl named Madison. Madison wanted to know if her friends like rainy days. She made a survey and collected the data below. Madison's survey question says, do you like rainy days? Her friends' names are written in the yes and no columns under the survey question. What do you notice? What do you wonder? Share your ideas with someone nearby. What is happening in this problem? What action is taking place? Well, Madison wanted to learn about her friends, so she made a survey and asked each of them the question, do you like rainy days? If her friend said yes, she wrote their name in the yes column. If they said no, she wrote their name in the no column. I wonder if the information in the table will help us to solve a problem. I wonder what problem Madison might have. We can also visualize this problem to help us make sense of the story. We can record our thinking on the graphic organizer. The table tells us that when Madison asked her friends if they liked rainy days, a beer, Abigail, Diamond, Alyssa, Fredo, and Chloe all said Yes, they do like rainy days. Her friends Daisy, Amara, Terrell, and Tyrone said no, they do not like rainy days. Madison recorded the names of her friends as a way to help her keep track of the information or data she was collecting. In the second step of the three read strategy, we are going to read the story problem again, but this time we are going to read for details. Madison wanted to know if her friends like rainy days. She made a survey and collected the data below. How many of Madison's friends answered the survey? This is when we will begin to focus in on the numbers in the problem and think about what those numbers represent. Do you see any numbers in this problem? Is there anything we can count and represent with numbers? We will also begin to think about what mathematical concepts we could use to help us solve the problem. We can think about the problem structure or the type of problem we will need to solve. 
Are numbers going to be combined or subtracted? What operation could we use? Addition or subtraction? We should also look at any vocabulary in the problem and at the table of information. We can also use annotations like a star or a question mark to indicate parts of the problem that we understand or parts that we still need to know more about. I put two stars next to the two categories in the survey that told us how many of Madison's friends answered yes and no when asked if they like rainy days. I put a question mark next to the words answered the survey because I'm still a bit unsure of how I will figure out what information will help me answer this question. On my organizer for step two, I can show that I understand that there are one, two, three, four, five, six. Six friends who said yes, they do like rainy days. And there are one, two, three, four, four friends that said no, they do not like rainy days. During our third read of this problem, we are going to read to represent. We will represent the information in the problem with a mathematical drawing. We will be thinking about strategies we have used this year to help us solve problems like this one. We can think about using counters, pictures, or equations that will help us represent this problem and find an answer to the question. What operation can we use that will help us solve this type of problem? What type of problem are we solving? As we represent the problem, we will need to remember to label our drawings so that someone else will be able to understand our thinking. As I read the problem this time, be thinking about how you will represent it mathematically. Madison wanted to know if her friends like rainy days. She made a survey and collected the data below. How many of Madison's friends answered the survey? We will use the numbers we discovered in step two to help us represent the problem. On the organizer, I can show how to represent this problem using counters. I can use six blue counters to represent Madison's six friends that voted yes, and use four orange counters to represent the four friends that voted no when answering the survey question. One, two, three, four, five, six, six blue counters. One, two, three, four, four orange. Six blue counters to represent the six friends that answered yes on the survey. Four orange counters to represent the four friends who answered no on the survey. I could also represent this problem using a mathematical drawing. I can draw like a mathematician and make a simple drawing of the six friends who answered yes and then draw the four friends who answered no. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four. Here are the six friends who answered yes to the survey. And here are the four friends who answered no to the survey.
Now it is time for us to solve the problem. As we solve, it is important to be accurate and precise. We also need to make sure that we follow the directions in the problem and use equations or words to explain our thinking. We also want to be sure that we use correct math vocabulary, symbols, and numbers as we solve the problem. I think I can use my drawing to show how I could put together the two groups of friends to find the total number that answered Madison's survey question. Since I am putting the two groups together, I know my answer should be a greater number. I can start with the six friends who answered yes, and then count on four more for the friends who answered no. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten friends in all. I can write an equation to explain my thinking. Six plus four equals ten. Ten friends answered the survey. Now it is time to check our work. You should reread the problem one last time to make sure that you used all the information given in the problem. Then you should ask yourself, does my answer make sense? Finally, you should make sure that you answered all the parts of the problem because some problems have more than one part. We can use another strategy to check our work. We used a drawing to solve the problem and found that 10 of Madison's friends answered her survey about rainy days. I'm going to use a number line to check my work. I can build a bar that represents the six friends who answered yes. I can then build a bar that represents the four friends that answered no. When I place the bars on the number line, I can see that six friends and four friends make a total of 10 friends. Six plus four equals 10. 10 friends did answer Madison's survey. Now it is your turn to practice using the three read strategy as you solve the problems on the Sunny Days resource sheet. Thanks for spending time with me today to learn about the three read strategy. Have an amazing day, kindergartners. Well, boys and girls, that's it from us for this week. And on behalf of your friends here at BCPS Math, we want you to know that you are so loved, that you are so important, and that you hold the future in your hands. So stay safe, be kind, and do the math.